Why Do We Play MMOs uh, by Dian Legacy. He actually has some pretty interesting videos as well, but this is an extremely short video, so we're just going to take a look. If I had to guess why we're playing MMOs, I would say for most people is it might be a farm. They're lonely in a sense, you know what I mean? Maybe they don't have a lot of friends uh, in real life. I, I can't say for sure myself. I think what I like about it is that it's a persistent world. Like, that's my favorite thing about it. Because um, I do like RPGs like Witcher 3, Elden Ring and stuff. But I still don't like the... Well, I don't devote as much time in them as I would in MMO. Let's take a look. The open worlds, the engaging storylines, a need for social interaction, and sometimes... Yeah. Cat girls and bunny boys. We all have our own reasoning <laughs> and justification for playing MMOs. And sure, not all reasons were created equal. <coughs> Cat girls. But all reasons are valid. Everyone's reason is as equally important. Cat girls. No. I mean, it's obvious he uh, is a big Final Fantasy XIV uh, player. And let's stay on topic. Look, I for one like the open world and exploration aspect and experiencing something yeah. new. Mm, Cat girls. An inherent need to see the outside world from a perspective that doesn't involve ignoring phone calls and hiding behind blinds and a window, while others prefer the aspect of PvE, as the predictability of the content yeah. they enjoy is less scary to them and more inviting. Which is understandable, as many of these players like routine, and the idea of facing something unpredictable and unprepared for in everyday life is frightening and soul-crushing, as they struggle to grow up and accept that they can't control everything in their life, and that's the See, I don't think that's why people like PvE. I would actually disagree with that. I think what people like about it is that progression. Like, you getting better as a player, overcoming a challenge that maybe, you know, isn't easy. You know what I mean? Because it's like, imagine if they released the raids that were just, like, you can roll over them. Like, you didn't have to do rotations. You just beat them. No one would like that. Even though... And if they did that over and over, it would fall into what you said, like it's a safe space sort of sorts to them. So I don't actually agree with that. The main reason they're alone and order the same takeout every night. No, Simon, she doesn't want to go to the Winchester. I will, though. Please take me. Sometimes predictability can be a good thing, though. PvPers haven't really discovered this life-altering aspect yet. Waking up every morning, pouring orange juice into their cereal. Well, PvPers, they also to an extent are the same thing like because there's metas so if you're running if obviously this guy doesn't really pvp too much i think because if he did like he would know there is like a formula to pvp as well it's why a lot of like really high-end pvpers will post like their talents their um what's what i'm looking for their rotation because even though there can be slight adjustments depending on what you're fighting against it's very rare you have to make really like a lot of changes to your um, gameplay. And choosing chaos. Like your build and stuff and how you play it. Chaos. Knowing what they'll be doing hours in advance is actually. Maybe at the very top end of PvP, but most PvP know. And I think that works the same way with PvE. Anxiety inducing. And they tend to be the type of people that point out the local school hasn't burned down in a few years. And right this second is the best moment to rectify that. But what else would you expect from a player base? whose life motto is get good scrub. PvE and PvP aside, some players come for the minigames. And PvEers say the same thing, get good all the time. Look at Dark Souls. That's mainly a PvE game, and yet that's where people like really are into like, hey, just get good. You just gotta be better. Be it a game's chosen card game, pet battles, or even chocobo racing. Mine will be a max stat knight pedigree soon. That's not a brag, I'm just being really hopeful. Some players prefer the chaotic mindset through children's card games, Pokemon, or Cox-style NASCAR. A traumatic childhood, void of the sense of loss a game of Monopoly can bring, has driven these players in swarms to seek out the growing anger issues these games induce. To flip the metaphoric <laughs> Monopoly table, and I await the cookie I believe I deserve for that masterful segue, on the underside of this table you'll find the crafters. Seeking out MMOs where these players can cheat RNG by creating whatever they want, from flaming swords to apartment bar tables. The artists of the MMO world, with all the artistry of a shopping trolley in the real world, as children they said, I shall create. 
their imagination is the only limitation. And Diltud said, have that paperwork on my desk by noon or we move your office to a toilet cubicle. Moving from office life to the cat. I don't know, man. Like, I I did crafting in Final Fantasy. I did crafting in WoW. But it wasn't, like, for artistic purposes. It was making my own gear. It's that same feeling of, like, you getting the gear from doing a boss. I think, at least. It's the gear grind, I think. Half walk for a lot of players. End game is all about that. Or some people do it for making money. You know, that's usually the best way of making money in uh, these type of games is being a crafter or gatherer. High street fashion, weaving tales of heroism, bravery, and a dentist receptionist. There is no end to the styles and appearance art of these players, and it's hard to deny that fashion is the true end game. With the dedication to the craft these players commit, aside from their clear commitment, I don't think fashion is the true end game. I I think fashion is a good placeholder uh, until more content comes out. Like, what's the word I'm looking at? I don't think placeholder is the right word for it, but maybe it is. But I think for a lot of players, fashion is just there until the new content is released. So at least you have something to do, you know? Because usually when new content comes out, no one really cares about the fashion anymore. They want to do the new content, get all the armor. I mean, maybe they'll want to get the new armor for a fashion. But it's like, imagine if new content came out and there was this box next to the door or portal that would lead you to like the new land, new quest, new, uh, all the new stuff. But next to that portal was just a box that had all the fashion items from it. Like how many people would just get the box and never even touch that portal? I would assume practically none. Most would still want to maybe get the box and go in the portal. But if it was a choice between one or the other... It'd probably be 99.9% .9 of the time you'd choose the portal. That's what I mean by fashion not being like the true end game. Commitment issues with the real world, disregarding the fact that their sleep schedule is as hectic as a world. Like if, for example, they say, oh, the game's no longer going to be serviced content wise, but we're just going to release um, fashion items. The game's probably going to die like relatively quickly. War One Trench, we may need to exhale a sigh of relief that they're too tired to enact the atrocities that these clear psychotic tendencies would lead you to believe that they're capable of, a capability or peers don't share. And that's their main reason for searching out MMOs with large <laughs> Of course, yeah, the show something like that. <laughs> and role play their greatest fantasies, letting their imagination run wild. Because when you struggle to yep. open jars for your imaginary wife... Yeah, if you're into RP, like, Final Fantasy is a great game for that. You can always just roleplay it. ERPers, on the other hand, I am very sure roleplay a safer environment among like-minded people because it's very hard to get someone to agree being tied up, blindfolded, and whipped for crimes they didn't commit. Not sure why, though. The ball gags are always so comfortable. Without these players, without you, without us, as a whole, okay. then what would MMOs be? <laughs> yes, they might be an escape, a second life, or just to relax for an evening. But that in no way diminishes the enjoyment or engagement we as an MMO player base get from this kind of choice. Sure, we and our friends can go watch a movie, hang out at the bar, or relax on a beach together. Sometimes you just need to craft a flaming sword to make another player cry because you kill their pet, looking fly doing it, and retreating to an underground ERP dungeon just to unwind. And relax as a group <laughs> after a day's work. Thanks for watching, guys. Why not comment below before? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, it's just sharing an existing fantasy world. I think it's just attractive to a lot of people. So, I, it's a decent video. I do disagree with some of his points there, but I think overall, like, fun video.